when I first started producing, I was making good beats and stuff for what I thought to be good beats. But the problem was always, I could never get my drums to hit as hard as these mainstream producers. So today, that's what I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do. All right, so I'm gonna break this video down into three steps, with step one being your sound selection. Now honestly, step one, sound selection, probably the most important part of making your drums knock. You don't wanna find these low quality kits that you're getting off like r slash drum kits or anything like that. None of these free downloaded kits are really gonna do you justice. So really the most important thing is your kick. You're never gonna find a really good kick in these free downloaded kits. You, I always find that the free downloaded kits always have these kicks that are really sloppy and like muddy and never sound good. All right, so with step one out of the way, we're gonna start getting into some actual production. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a loop for my outsource kit. This isn't out yet, but it'll be out soon. So stay tuned for that. So I'm just gonna pitch this down real quick. And I'm also gonna remove all the low end out because I don't want any of that. I'm gonna remove pretty much everything beyond 230 hertz. All right, so now I'm gonna make a simple drum pattern real quick, and then I'll show you guys step two. And by the way, all the sounds that I use in this video are gonna be in my new kit. Check the description for the link. All right, so here's the drum pattern I ended up making. So you can tell it's pretty simple, it's unmixed, but the drums are already hitting pretty hard. And that's because the sounds that I've used are actually decent drums. But now we're gonna get into step two, which involves a little bit of mixing. So step two is gonna be correctly leveling your drums. So the way I level my drums is I first start by taking everything, including the melody and bringing the levels all the way down. You can do this by holding control and just dragging across your mixer tracks on your keyboard. And then I usually start with the melody and I bring that up to about negative 15 decibels. And then I'll go and move on to the hi-hat. For the hi-hat, you usually want it about negative nine to negative six, depending on your hi-hat. You always wanna make your hi-hat a little wider with this knob down here. You're also going to want to add an EQ and cut out any of the low end beyond around 30 or 30 hundred hertz. This will just move, remove anything that's making your mix sound a little muddy. And something I like to personally do is add the tiniest bit of reverb, which you could just use with um, free, Fruity Reverb 2. I usually just leave it as default and I just drag this low cut knob up a little bit and then... I bring the bus volume all the way down to about 13%. Then I'm going to move on to the clap. And I actually don't like how dark this clap is, so I'm going to go into the channel rack, click on the clap, go to the envelope settings, and actually bring it up and bring it up to A. So that'll make the clap a lot brighter. So I usually like my claps pretty loud. I wouldn't say there's like a default spot you want your clap to be. Just do something that sounds good to you. So after that, I'll probably move on to any perks such as snares, hi-hats, open hats, any extra sounds. And I'll just level those to about what I think sounds right. Another good tip is to use your panning knobs. This could really help make a more dynamic mix. And for my hi-hats, I like them to be pretty quiet and very spread out, very stereo. So I like to bring this knob almost all the way up. 
And then I also add, I like to add a decent amount of reverb on my open heads. All right, so now that all the percussion drums are pretty much done, I'm gonna move on to the kick. For the kick, I usually just bring it all the way up to zero. And you can already tell it's hitting pretty hard. So now I'm gonna start bringing the 808 up. And I'm using the spins 808, and this 808 tends to be a little bit lower in the mid section of the 808. So what I'm going to do is open up a fruity EQ and just bring the mid frequencies up a little bit. So that sounds about right to me. So a very important step in mixing your kick in 808 is to sidechain your kick to your 808. This will make your kick hit a lot harder. And what this does is it makes the 808 duck every time the kick hits. In order to do this, what I like to do is add a fruity peak controller to your kick. You can just pause the video and copy the settings I have right here. Then go to your 808 and I like to add a fruity love filter. Go to the presets and go to volume and panning. And then over here in the modulation tab, I like to right click on the Y knob and click link to controller. Drop down this menu and click peak control dash peak. Accept. And now you should have successfully side chained your 808 or your kick to your 808. <clears throat> so you can already tell these drums are hitting a lot harder just by leveling your drums correctly. One of the most important steps in making beats, I believe, is your mix, which can make or break your beat. And for the third step to making your drums hit, this isn't even as low key as it used to be anymore, but on your master, just add a fruity soft clipper. Now the soft clipper, all it does is, it's a, it's a form of soft compression, so what it does is anytime any sound goes above zero decibels, it'll just duck it. But I don't know a lot about compression, and I really, I might be wrong, but all I know is when I put this on my master, it makes it hit a lot harder. So after I add the Fruity Soft Clipper, what I like to do is play it, and I might move my kick up or down depending on how it sounds after I add the Soft Clipper. So I ended up moving it up because I didn't think it was loud enough. And a lot of people believe that if you go over zero decibels, which is considered clipping, it'll sound bad, but just use your ears. If it sounds good, it sounds good. I mean, it's your mix. Do what you want. Make your beat sound good. All right, so if you followed those three steps, with step one being good sound selection, step two being your mix, leveling your drums correctly, and step three being a soft clipper, you should have drums that sound like this. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. If you enjoyed any part of this video or learned anything new from this video, please drop a like and also hit that subscribe button. It really helps. Like I said, I'm going to be dropping a loop kit and a drum kit very soon, so stay tuned for that. They might even be done by the time this video drops, so look in the description just in case. But that's all I got for you guys right now. See you guys later.